If there's anything we like more than incredible archaeological discoveries, it's incredible archaeological discoveries that have an equally incredible story behind their discovery. An example might be an artifact that was found somewhere it shouldn't be, or a discovery that was made totally by accident by a member of the public. We've got plenty of stories like that for you in this video, and the artifacts involved are astonishing. There are very few professions in the world older than carpentry or farming. We already know that both occupations have existed for thousands of years, but it might surprise you to learn how little the basic technology involved in both farming and carpentry has changed in all that time. This set of 1,500-year-old tools was discovered in the ancient Greek city of Alexandria Troas in Kanakale, Turkey in October 2018. Most of the tools are in such good condition that with a little care and attention, they could still be used today. We can thank the fact that the tools were stored in a massive earthenware pithos for their excellent state of preservation. The tools were placed into the enormous storage vessel at some point during the 5th century, presumably for their protection. Whoever put them there never got the chance to come back for them. Whoever that person was, they'd put together quite an impressive collection of long nails, saws, drills, grinders, spatula scrapers, weed cutters, soil scrapers, and sickles. The collection would have been fairly valuable, so it's unlikely that the act of abandonment was deliberate. We mentioned at the start of this video that some of our discoveries were found by unlikely candidates. Here's a perfect example of what we meant by that. In 2016, an employee of a power plant in Israel discovered a collection of 3,500-year-old artifacts in the sea close to the power station where he worked. Rather than finding the entire collection at once, Marcel Mazala kept going back for several months to see if the sea had brought him any new gifts, and he was rarely disappointed with what he found. He's built up quite a wide and varied assembly of ancient artifacts including pieces of candlesticks, mortars and pestles, knives, toggle pins, and pieces of ceramic grenades of the kind that were used in and around Israel during the Mamluk and Crusader periods. Because most of the objects are all of a similar age, experts think that it's possible they fell overboard from a merchant's vessel in the area shortly before the completion of a journey that would have seen them brought to Israel from Syria. The objects are all now in the hands of the Israeli Antiquities Authority. A car boot sale is the British equivalent of what Americans would call a yard sale or a garage sale. You never know what you might find at one, and you're also never sure when someone might sell something that they ought to have charged considerably more money for. In 2014, ambulance driver Martin Jackson paid just three pounds for what appeared to be a shabby, broken wooden hammer at a car boot sale in Amble, Northumberland. His gut instinct told him that it might be more than it appeared to be, and he was right. The hammer is actually a 4,500-year-old ancient Egyptian maul of the kind used by craftspeople and builders to carve temples. After Martin took his hammer to an expert, it became possible to trace the artifact thanks to a distinctive silver band around its handle. It turns out that it was taken from Sakura to Ireland by a British military officer in 1905 and then stayed in his family for generations. How it came to be sold for three pounds at a car boot sale is unknown, but its true value is probably closer to 3,000 pounds than just three. China has a lengthy and convoluted history. Over millennia, the continent has hosted countless different cultures and civilizations, and we know a lot more about some than we do about others. We know very little about the ancient Chinese state of Shu, which is why the finding of this gold mask in March 2021 is so significant. It gives us a physical link to people who left scant written documents or artifacts behind. The mask is estimated to be 3,000 years old, according to archaeologists. It's from Saxingdui, possibly the country's most important archaeological site. The mask is one of over 500 artifacts discovered during the same dig, many of which could be shoe-related. Many of the items are made of valuable materials such as ivory, gold, jade, and bronze. 
Their evidence of these shoe states' wealth and prosperity before it was attacked and captured by the neighboring state of Quinn in the year 316 BCE. The mask, which is 84% pure gold, was most likely worn by a priest during important rituals, according to experts. We may never be able to confirm that, but it's incredible that something so delicate has survived for such a long time. It's time to head back to the United Kingdom and check out our next fascinating ancient site. Or should we say, sites? These are the Great Arme Copper Mines of Conway, Wales. Taken together, the structures represent the largest prehistoric copper mine in the world. Scientists have no doubt that copper was mined here. But they're less sure why over 30,000 animal bones were deliberately scattered through the mine's maze-like passageways by the ancient miners 3,500 years ago. From examining the condition of the stone, geologists believe that almost 2,000 tons of bronze were mined here during its years of operation. As ridiculous as it sounds, Nobody knew the mines were here until the entrance to the tunnels was found during a landscaping operation in 1987. Archaeologists were called to the scene and eventually identified a labyrinth of tunnels extending across nine levels and five miles beneath the surface. Some of them are so narrow that they can't have been accessed or created by adults. Scientists think that they may have been carved by children as young as five. The original users of the mine abandoned them about 2,600 years ago, but they were briefly brought back to use during the Roman era and again in the 17th century. They've been abandoned ever since. The Greek island of Santorini exists in a near constant state of archaeological excavation. How could the archaeologists ever leave when they keep making discoveries like the one we're about to see? At the end of 2018, researchers at the site of Akrotiri in Santorini identified the ruins of an ancient public building, which they nicknamed the House of Benches. Inside the house, they found a single marble figurine of a proto-cycladic female. The sculpture is thought to be around 3,600 years old and is typical of its type with folded arms and proportional limbs. The diagonal placement of the figurine inside a clay vessel is thought to be meaningful, although historians have no idea what the intended meaning may have been. Like many of the artifacts gathered from Akrotiri, the figurine is in such good condition because it was preserved by ash after the eruption of the Thera volcano more than 3,500 years ago. The settlement was destroyed, but everything under the ash and debris was protected. It's not without reason that people call Akrotiri the Greek Pompeii. It's likely that there'll still be discoveries to be made here a hundred years from now. An unflattering way to describe herbal citadel in Iraq would be an archaeological sandwich, which is the label many a historian and textbook has placed upon it in the past. It'd be kinder and more accurate to say that this ancient fortified mound has been built not just once, but perhaps a dozen times, with the latest iteration of it coming thousands of years after the first settlement to be built there. Because of that, there's layer after layer of archaeological material at the site for experts to work through. The full history of the site is thought to cover 7,000 years. The citadel atop the mound is quite a recent addition when compared to that. It's been standing for just 4,300 years. Strangely, the citadel is now more elevated than it was when it was new. The mud brick houses that were built on the mound have crumbled to dust and built the mound higher by a factor of about 100 feet from where it started. For most of its history, the citadel was occupied by either the Kurdish or Assyrian people, but there have been Mongols, Ottomans, Sumerians, and Europeans living here in the past. A lot of what you need to know about the Dover Bronze Age boat can be ascertained from its name. It's a boat, it's from the Bronze Age, and it was found in Dover, England. To dismiss it that way would be too simplistic, though. This is one of the oldest surviving seagoing boats in the world. The vessel was discovered accidentally by construction workers in the process of digging a new road in September 1992. 
It's roughly 3,500 years old and was in such a delicate state upon its discovery that it almost didn't survive the excavation process. A team from the Canterbury Archaeological Trust eventually cut the boat up into sections and removed it piece by piece over the course of a full month. They then reassembled it at a specially dedicated gallery in Dover Museum, where the boat remains to this day. The significance of the vessel is hard to overstate. 30 feet long and made from oak and yew branches, it's sturdy enough to have crossed the Dover Straits from England to France. The boats of a type that helped the ancient residents of England to meet and trade with the people of continental Europe. Our next find is of a type that's replicated all over the world, yet we have no idea why. Travel to see the ancient landmarks of Cornwall, which we looked at earlier, and you'll find a few examples of hold stones dating back to prehistoric times. You'll also find hold stones in Maltese temples, in Belgian dolmens, and even in the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Nobody knows why our ancient ancestors made holes in standing stones like this, so each one tends to take on its own meaning to the people who live close to it. As an example, the hole stone in Dog, Northern Ireland has become a traditional place where young people meet to profess their love to each other and propose marriage. That's unlikely to be what the Bronze Age people who erected it had in mind, but on the other hand, we have no better ideas about their intentions. Local theories as to the origin of the stone range from its uh, meeting place for Celtic kings to a pagan altar or even a marker for an as yet undiscovered tomb. It'd take a lot of effort to pierce a stone in this way thousands of years ago, so the act must have been on purpose. But we may never know what that was. Alaska isn't an easy place to live even today. It's cold even during the summer, and the climate is hostile. For the people who lived on Alaska's North Kodiak Island hundreds of years ago, survival came down to whether or not you could fish and how many fish you could catch. Faced with that harsh reality, they came up with a new way of fishing. Their method didn't rely on bait, hooks, or fishing rods. Instead, they made large fish traps from solid stone. Archaeologists from Alaska's Alatig Museum first identified an ancient fish trap in their area in 2017. It's made of two corrals surrounded by stone walls. The walls are low enough to allow salmon to swim over them when the tide is high, but also high enough to ensure that they can't swim back the other way when the tide goes out again. It's a cunning trap and would presumably have been very effective. Better still, it's a type of fishing that doesn't involve sitting around for hours waiting for something to happen. It's likely that the trap was first built 2,000 years ago, then rebuilt time and time again, almost until the start of the 20th century. 2,300 years ago, the part of the world that is now China and Korea was divided up into countless squabbling kingdoms. One of the most powerful of them was the Kaguryo Kingdom, which established itself around that time and lasted until the 7th century. The kingdom survived for 1,000 years, but today there's almost nothing left of it other than the Kaguryo Tomb Complex. The complex is an UNESCO World Heritage Site and offers us our only chance to gain insight into the life and culture of the Kaguryo people. Roughly half of the 90 tombs at the site are covered in stunningly elaborate wall paintings. It's likely that the decorated tombs were made for kings, queens, and their aristocratic friends and family. The plain tombs would have been open to other members of society, although it's clear that even being buried in a plain tomb was still a higher honor than the average citizen would receive. Rather than depicting religious, hunting, or ceremonial scenes, the paintings offer us a look at the day-to-day -day lives of the people of this lost kingdom. We've talked about two stone circles during this video so far. Is Lindholm Hoji in Norris Sunby, Denmark another stone circle? Well, it is in a way, but it's also much more than that. This field of jagged standing stones contains circles, but it also contains lines and other patterns. Rather than being an ancient calendar of the kind that many historians suspect most stone circles to be, Lindholm Hoji is a huge cemetery that still holds the bodies of more than 700 Vikings. 
The first burials here actually took place in the early 4th century, long before the start of the Viking Age. But they became more frequent during the Viking era before suddenly coming to an unexplained halt in the early 10th century. The hillside location of the cemetery offers an excellent view of nearby Aalborg, but the city didn't even exist when the last person was laid to rest here. It would have been nothing but open fields. The usual patterns made by the rocks sometimes appear to be effigies of longboats with pointed stones at each end. There's also some evidence of large fires at the site, so the stone boats might have stood in for the real thing during traditional Viking funerals. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.